Thank you, Pierre, and welcome, everyone. I'm thrilled to be part of such an amazing project and community. First of all, I would like to renew our commitment to open source. Strapi is an open source project, and we deeply believe in the values attached to it. Being open source is a spirit, a philosophy. It's about freedom, transparency, free speech, and privacy. In these difficult times, we all know how important those values are. So, thank you for your support in the journey by contributing, promoting, and using Strapi each day. Today, I wanted to talk about an hidden feature within Strapi. Something that we use on a daily basis without knowing how powerful it is. If you are use, already used Strapi, you will probably know the dynamic zones and components, but the true concept behind is the atomic content. Atomic content is the new design system. If you are not familiar with the atomic content approach, let me explain it to you. An atomic content approach is when we break down a content structure, like the homepage of a website, for example, into smaller pieces of content that can be reused anywhere, on another page, on another project. Let's take a look at the homepage of the Strapi.io website and analyze its content model. We can see that we have three buttons. In terms of content structure, the needs are the same. A link, a label, and a background color. In Strapi, we call this a component, a small content structure that we reuse in different places on the, on the page, or on another page, or on another application. If I scroll down on the same page, we can find a more interesting content structure. We call it the feature component. Each feature component has three fields. The media fields to manage the icon on the left, and two other fields to manage the title and the description. Again, they all share the same content structure. The cool thing is that if I go on another page, we can find again the same feature component. Visually speaking, it looks a bit different, but the content structure is the same. This is the perfect example of having an atomic content approach. We can reuse content components wherever we need them and display them differently. Because, in reality, digital projects often have similar needs. The content structure are almost identical. From buttons to links or feature list or menu or footer, it's always the same. And the front-end engineers and designers understood it years ago with the front-end components in React of View and the design system. If we continue our parallel with the design system, we can compare the CMS terms in Strapi with the one used in the design system. For instance, the fields are the atoms. The components are the molecules. The dynamic zone, as we call them at Strapi, are the organism. And finally, the content types are the pages or templates. In fact, the real power is in the system and the implementation. Because when you make a change in a field which is part of a component, the, the headed, the change, is available everywhere, instantly, in every single dynamic zone and content types using the component. It makes the whole content structure super flexible, highly maintainable, easily reusable, and very consistent. According to our users and customers, Swapi is the best CMS if you want to have an atomic content approach for your next project. We have seen many projects use the capable of maintaining content structure at scale and digital agencies reusing components across different projects by copying, pasting the components file from a project to another. Let me show you in a short demo how easy it is to create components in Swapi and reuse them in another project. So for the sake of this demo, I have already created two projects. The project A is going to be a blog, while project B, a corporate website. The goal is to share a Strapi component from project B to project A. Um, so let's start by running both servers uh, and see what we have already built. Um, so I use the yarn develop command to launch the servers. They are running on two different ports uh, for this demo. Let's uh, open the browser and um, 
see project A, we already have an article, uh, articles collection type uh, with a very simple uh, content structure, title, a cover, and a content dynamic zone. In project B, we already have some pages, like the home page. If I go in the content type builder, uh, we can see the structure is very simple, a title and dynamic zone um, called body. And we have an interesting component uh, because there is a repeatable component within another component. Um, what I want is to add a new component. So I create a new component called button. And in a new category called shared, um, then I will have three fields. The first one is going to be the label. So this is a short text and the second one, um, a link. It's a short text and the third field, uh, field will be, um, is going to be a media field for managing an icon, for example. Then I save, the server restart. I go back in my pages collection type and I had the new freshly created component button. So we can find, yeah, you can see the button component is in the dynamic zone. I save and that's it. If I go back in the content manager, I can contribute this new uh, and use this new component. Uh, I click on button, then I add the label, register to newsletter. I add the links to Pio slash register and a very cool icon for this button. I save and yeah. So let's uh, dig a bit deeper and analyze what happened in uh, on my machine. So in each project we have a we have a components folder, and in project B we can see there is another folder called shared with the button the JSON um, component in it. So let's open this component in VS Code, and we can see there are there are three fields: the the field we just defined with the validation and type for each field. Uh, what will happen if I copy this uh, folder from project B to project A? So let's just try it. Um, so I just copy the, okay, the folder there. And in VS Code, we can see that we now have the share folder and with the same component, the button. So the server already restarted. Um, so we just need to go back in the bother and refresh the page, the administration. We can see that the share um, category is here with the button uh, component, which is really cool. I had this component in my dynamic zone. So yeah, the button is here in my dynamic zone and I save. So go back into content manager. We are in the product A and I will add and use that um, component to also create a register to newsletter button. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to um, add uh, an icon from this one because all the fields are optional. So there's no required validation for this component. I save and that's it. So to conclude by storing all the content structure into files, it makes the components easily exportable and shareable between projects. It's a very powerful and hidden feature in Strapi, especially for digital agency when you are creating a lot of new projects per year. Finally, this demo leads me to this idea to create a community platform to share generic components between each other as a community. It will be easier to get started by reusing pre-built components. It will advocate best practices, avoid mistakes, and make the content modeling way faster. We also could imagine a public and private collection of components for personal use only. What do you think about this idea? Um, I would love to have all your feedback and insight. Feel free to reach out to React in the chat, on Twitter, on our forum, forum.swapi.io. Today, it's just an idea. We'd like to measure the interest and know how useful it could be for you and us as a community. Before making some exciting announcement, I thought it would be interesting to clarify differences between traditional and endless CMSs, because endless is the new normal. There is no more differences between what we call the traditional and headless CMS. Every single CMS is moving to headless, if it is not already one. I think we could just admit that the headless CMS are not different. 
they are just the new cool kids in town and the next generation of CMS. However, they haven't been built to solve the same problem. At Strapi, we imagine the future of the CMS as a single source of truth for your content. We aim to believe in a future when the content is dispatched across designers, developers, and content editor tools to keep the content synchronized between each other. From Figma to Sketch, or View and React, or DeepL and Crowding, all those tools have a lot in common. They share the same source of content. And our vision is that this source of content is going to be the CMS. It's no time to make some announcement. In order to pursue our mission to empower millions of people to manage content, it was important to continue our effort to provide the best content editing experience. When Puffing was meeting, it struck me the ability to translate content. As an international project and community, it was crucial to enable each one of you to translate your content in multiple languages. It's not possible. Let's watch it together. I'm very excited to announce the release of the internationalization feature. It's 100% open source under a mighty license. It's free, unlimited, you can translate your content in all the locals and languages without any limitations and restrictions. The team focus our efforts on the productivity aspect by keeping the existing user flow. You can easily copy your content from a local to another. It's perfectly integrated with the existing draft and publish functionality and the current permission system. We also study all the use cases. For example, we know that sometimes the content structure can be a bit different according to the language. This use case is perfectly handled by the dynamics of the components with the internationalization feature. The feature is provided through a plugin and is tied by default in each new project. It's available today, so give it a try. When we started to design this feature, we knew that it would be a plugin. We want to keep the core of Trapi as lightweight as possible. However, the development of the internationalization feature pushed the limits of our existing system to easily integrate external plugins in the current interface and the core of Strapi. As you know, our goal is to build a software where everyone can participate by customizing the administration panel, creating new plugins like Quidi, enhancing existing functionalities, and makes the migration easier between versions. In order to build a successful future, it requires consistency and harmony. At Strapi, we want to offer the best experience for developers and content editors. And we have to admit that currently, we are not reaching our ambitions. Today, we wanted to share with you a sneak peek uh, of what the future of Strapi will look like. We call it the V4. It's a brand new version of Strapi, including a free and open source design system to build beautiful and consistent plugins.
I hope you appreciated the video. Uh, the V4 isn't available yet. We expect a beta version available this summer. This new version will enable us to develop new very asked features, such as content versioning, workflow, custom fields, revision history, import, export data, and more, way faster than we are able to do today. I'm going to hand it back to Alexandre, who will talk about the V4 from an engineering perspective. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the conference.